Hi, I'm Eileen Bild. I'm with Hotel Talk. And today I'm so thrilled. I'm so happy to have Ramona Pentia with me. And uh, Ramona, she was born and raised at the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains in Brasov, Transylvania. Hi, Ramona. Hello. Thank you for having me, Eileen. I'm very excited to be here today with you. I'm excited to have you. I, I think our conversation is going to be uh, just awesome. And I can't wait to, to start our conversation and, and dig into who you are and how the painting became a part of your life. Um, but first, I want to introduce you. So uh, her career has gone from fashion designer, co-founding and building a high-end fashion label, interior design, and ultimately becoming a world-renowned international artist. She has psychology, spirituality, and personal development deeply influencing her as a human being and as an artist. So along the way, Ramona learned leadership and personal growth from leaders such as Tony Robbins, Louise Hay, Jim Ron, and spirituality from various luminaries in the field, including Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Brandon Bayes, Dr. Brian Weiss, Neil Donald Walsh. I'm, I'm familiar with all of these people. <laughs> I'm right on that path with you. Um, she's also studied NLP, angel therapy, Doreen Virtue, Reiki, shamanism, past life, re past life regression, Vortex energy and theta healing. Oh my gosh, Ramona. <laughs> I need to like wrap you up and put you out there because that's that's quite a quite an impressive I guess, background. I guess TV was out of the question and flying around the world to listen to all these amazing people was, you know, on my agenda for, for 20 years and it still is, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, I, I can identify with uh, it, it never ends. You know, once once yeah. you open up yourself to that path of, of listening and studying and watching uh, those kinds of people and the content, and the information and the wisdom they have, um, I think, uh, you know, it puts us on a growth path that uh, we continue to grow. It, it just never ends. And I'm sure it's helped to reinforce your art. And, oh, yeah. and how that um, uh, uh, influences the artwork that you um, find yourself in um, presenting and in doing. So okay. um, your, my first question to you is, is what actually drives you to paint? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so um, I guess when I moved to London in uh, 89, I think it was. No, in 91, sorry. Too long ago, in another <laughs> lifetime. Um, I studied a little bit of art, but at the time I was coming from Romania with, uh, you know, with this mentality that of the, of the starving artist. And, you know, I'm going to starve as an artist. And I didn't want to do that. So I was too afraid to pursue a career as an artist. So, uh, you know, I ended up doing fashion design, like you said, and then I ended up doing interior design, still very creative, still uh, in, in, in businesses that were, you know, where I was able to express my creativity. But somewhere at the back of my mind, it was always the idea, oh, if only I could just be a full-time painter, if only I could just be an artist. And then, you know, one day I turned 40 <laughs> <laughs> and I said, now it's the time, now is the time to do it. So, so yeah, then, then the di difficult parts, the difficult parts started after that. <laughs> Well, then we can talk about that as well. Um, yeah. But I, I think um, I, I want to add a little something to when you said you turned 40 and, and you said now is the time. So do you feel like there was something in you that was like pushing you and pulling you towards um, stepping into uh, feeling comfortable pursuing that career as a full-time career? 
I think because you mentioned that you and probably your audience is a little bit more open to, uh, you know, receiving messages and being in tune, and then I can probably tell you the story of what happened and how I became an artist. So it was always at the back of my mind, and I was painting as I was running my businesses, you know, as a hobby, like many of us do, um, distressing and enjoying the process of painting. And um, when I turned 40, my husband and I took a trip to the United States and we spent a month there. We, ha we hired a car and we traveled around the country. And when we landed in Miami, there was this gallery that we were visiting. Well, obviously we were visiting a lot of art galleries, but there was a particular art gallery in Miami that we were visiting and I was... Um, I was thinking, oh, I would really love to exhibit here. It's so beautiful. It's, you know, it's an amazing space. And the art director, I started telling him, oh, you know, I paint a little bit. And he's probably thinking, oh, you and a million <laughs> other artists, stop nagging me. So he said, yes, here's an email. We are, you know, six people and um, send us some paintings. And once a month we get together. And if we think you're any good, then we'll email you. And as we were driving, um, we left Miami and we were driving through um, the desert after, uh, from um, uh, Grand Canyon to LA. We were driving through the desert and I was having this conversation with my husband and he said, I think at one point one of us said, oh, if we had a magic wand then you could be, do whatever you want to do, what would you do? And I said... I would like to be a full-time artist. Mm. And then I said, oh, well, you know, forget about this. And I turned the radio on. And when I put the radio, there was this channel, like a, like a spiritual channel. And the woman on the radio was saying, anything you desire is a gift from God. For the fact that you want it, for the fact that you desire it, that means you're meant to do it. So go for it. <laughs> talk about perfect timing right <laughs> exactly so I was like I obviously took that as a sign and on our journey I emailed this guy with this gallery and we hadn't even finished our holiday and he invited me to exhibit that year uh, during the Ad Art Basel in um, October I think it was that, that year in 2013 so this was happening in July and he said you know come back and you can you can um exhibit with us so then you know that year I turned back and I walked into my business and I said that's it I'm closing the business done. this is <laughs> the sign for me I have to do this <laughs> so so was it a little scary to do that you know was it um I think any new endeavor it's more fun for me than scary it became more difficult because once you paint because it's a hobby and you enjoy it and you love the process of painting, you know, it, it's one thing. But then when you become a full time artist and you have all this pressure, is the painting good enough? Would it be good enough for somebody to buy it or somebody to hang it in their homes? And, and then you put all these pressures on you. And, and I'm mainly a self-taught artist. So then I spend the next five years just, you know, working on my skills and making sure that I'm as good as any artist who's been through any <laughs> university. And then there's also finding your voice. What do you have to say? Do you have something to say or do you just paint because you enjoy painting? So I didn't want to be a painter, you know, to just paint because I love the process of painting. I wanted to be an artist that has something to say through my art. And I had to find how do I say what I have to say? And I guess a lot of what I have to say comes from all my personal and spiritual development that I've been doing for years. So somehow I had to find a way of putting that into my art. And that took a lot of soul searching and hard work. I, I can imagine, and it, it was kind of bridging the two worlds and, and bringing it through the element of the artwork. I mean, your artwork is, I want to say, it's exquisite, it's extraordinary, it's, it's just truly amazing and, and unique. You know, it, it's got its own twist to it, which is a reflection of you in that artwork. So, so, and this goes to my next question, 
what are the messages that you're trying to convey through your paintings? So I guess um, um, I really started to put messages through in my art in around 2015. And I think every artist comes with its own life story and experiences, and we put that into our art. And around that time, I was going through a, a, a period in my life where it was a little bit difficult. And I turned to ask these questions outside, you know, that have been asked for thousands of years. Why are we here? Do we have a purpose? What's our purpose? Is there a God? Is there a, you know, divine being or a higher purpose? And then I created a series of paintings called um, um, Quest, because I was on a quest myself. And there's a lot of nudes, because obviously when you're nude, you're at your most vulnerable state. Right. And they're looking out, out and they're kind of asking these questions. And one day when I was painting these nudes, I was sitting and looking at one and I just felt the need to put... Um, an angel wing on it. Mm -hmm. And then that painting became growing my wings. And that's when I got the message that the answers are within us, that we are part of this universe and we are part of the higher purpose and the higher being and I should start looking inside. And then the, the paintings evolved into me looking inside and uh, going through some shamanic meditations and, and looking at shamanism and looking at uh, um, and I think I've kind of lost the trail of your question, but the, the <laughs> core of it is I'm looking at women and I'm portraying women from a woman's point of view. Because if you look throughout history, you go to any museum, women are painted all the time by men. <laughs> That's true. Exactly. And I'm a woman and I want to paint women from our point of view. And I want to, and as I'm going through my own journey of being a woman, of being a mother, of being a business person, of being an artist, I'm discovering things about myself and I'm putting those into my art. And I'm saying to women out there, look how amazing you are. Look at all the strength that you have within you. Look at all these possibilities that there are there and then you're probably not tapping into your full potential and you know you are stronger than you are you are uh, more courageous than you think you are more I think I look at men I look at my husband who he just knows his cool mm -hmm. you know he just knows it and men in general are like that they are confident and we need to be told, we need to be told and we need to be told that we're beautiful and that we are, you know, we need to be complimented. And I think my questions are, my, my paintings are as if you're giving yourself a compliment. I love that. And, and I can, yes, and I can see that if you look at one of your paintings, we're drawn into it. And and, there, and we can feel and sense, or at least I know I can when I look at them. Um, there's a message in there for me. You know, when I look at it, it's almost like a reflection of myself. And that painting yeah. is telling me something about myself. And every person who looks at it, the same painting might hear something or see something different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Which I think is phenomenal to be able to create piece of art that has such a powerful impact on someone individually just by them looking at it. So um, you say that your art aims to connect us to different dimensions, charming and fulfilling, but equally real and available. So tell me more about that. Um, I think it, it, it's, it's about what I was just saying earlier, it's about our inner world. Uh, once you start all this self-development journey and all this um, um, journey, you start looking at yourself more, whether you're looking at your mind or whether you're looking at your spiritual being or, um, and once you connect with it, 
you realize that it's real. It's just as real as your physical body is. It's just here and that you need to tap into it and you need to be connected to it because that's really the beauty of life. And it keeps you in the moment, in the present moment, and it keeps you uh, appreciating what you have and away from the you know, noise. There's just too much noise out there. Uh, it brings you back into being centered. And I think you can do that through a piece of art. I mean, I've, 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 I've had people telling me what they feel by looking at a piece of art. And I've, I've done that, you know, I've, I went through, <laughs> I think I was in San Francisco, no, in LA I was, and I went into a museum and I stood in front of a painting for two hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't see anything else. It was just one painting and I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I, I just had to look at it in all its glory for two hours. So art has, has such a powerful way of connecting ourselves to the beauty of this world, to the beauty of our creation, to the beauty and the reason why we're here, you know, being music or visual art that it's a shame that we don't do more of it. <laughs> I, I can't agree with you. Uh, I mean, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I totally. Um, something that came to mind as you were sharing is uh, with the, the spiritual work that you've done and tying that into your art, um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in everything is energy. Everything has a, has a vibration, everything has a connection. And so with your art, if someone hangs it in a room on the wall, it's going to bring the energy of whatever you put into that, uh, into that space. So I can see how your art can be almost like a salt lamp, but it's a, but it's a picture, right? Um, so, Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm just curious, have you heard any feedback from people to where um, it's, well, it's, it's expressed itself in that way? Well, first of all, this is something that I do consciously because mm -hmm. I've done this work. Uh, you know, I make sure that I put only positive energy into my art. I mean, there are a lot of artists that, that draw from their pain and people uh, you know, connect with that part of their lives. I think I've, you know, gone over that and I'm in such a happy place in my life and I love life in general. And I want to infuse my paintings consciously with that as well. And I can only paint when I'm in a good mood, only. I can only paint when I'm happy. I, I never pick up a brush if I'm, <laughs> if I'm upset. Um, so one thing is, yes, I do it consciously. I want people when they have something in their, in their homes to be, to be bringing them joy and happiness. And, and I mean, you can even tell from the colors that I use, it's, yes. it's all of an explosion of happiness. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. I like that. Pardon? I, I, that's a great way to put it. It's an explosion of happiness. Absolutely. I mean, just watching you're talking and I, I keep, getting pulled into all the colors in the background and, and it just feels so good, right? Yes, and she's beautiful. Yes, I love that. There's somebody I'm working on at the moment. Uh, but another point that I wanted to touch is also, I guess that's why original art is so precious. And that's the difference between an original piece of art and a print. Right. Because the original piece of art brings the energy of the artist with it. It brings the, the, the story of who the artist is. And I think people, you know, want that part of the artist with them and that energy with them. And as I said, some people connect with a more, you know, probably not so positive or, or, or sad or whatever, a different energy that mm -hmm. some people may draw on. And it's just where they are at their point in their lives and what they connect with. But it's, I think that's the value of original art. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think I said earlier, you know, it's unique. And yeah. I think as much as society tries to put everybody into the same box, really as humans, we don't want to all be in the same box. Yeah. And, uh, you know, life, 
I believe is the same experience for everybody as far as we're born, we have our life and then we pass on. But what happens in that in between space is a different experience for everyone, but we may have similar you know, traits of it and, and um, the ups and downs, but it's our own, it's our own personal experience. Yes. And, and when we can connect with music, with a song, with a piece of art, that's our own way of healing, let's say, or Absolutely. feeling, you know, a connection with, as you said earlier, some other source, higher source, something bigger than us. And yeah. um, I, I just think your art is very unique in that it, it is a true testament to you as the artist, bringing yourself into that art for the purpose of bringing something positive to someone yeah. else's life. So um, you believe that all components of the universe, including men and women, are all equally essential and worthy. So what would you like to add to that? So I guess that I guess this is my feminism. We all have <laughs> that. <laughs> and bursting out. So um, I am a feminist, and I'm a feminist that believes that men and women are different, and we need to uh, stay different. Men shouldn't become like men. We don't want to be out there and and you know behave like men or rule like men we want to be who we are because the planet needs both of us you know it needs the focus and the the strength of the men but it also needs the strength of the woman right so um uh, my i think my paintings speak a lot about the fact that um you know, just because we want to be leaders and strong, it doesn't mean that we have to leave behind our femininity and our vulnerability and our nurturing side, you know. Uh, it means that these are our assets and these are the ones that we do need to bring on the table. Uh, these are the ones that we should, uh, you know, embrace and, and, and um grow I don't I don't think we you can grow <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the word you're looking for is honor for us to honor exactly. that part of Thank us you. You yes welcome. honor them and and use them in in our everyday lives and be yes. who we are because because I believe in balance and I believe that the world needs balance men and women you know together create a beautiful balance absolutely and, yes. and in my you know, positive mind, this is how the world should be with men and women in a in perfect balance and harmony. Oh, I, I think that sounds like a wonderful world. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I call that strength with grace. So yes, it's, it's I having, love yeah, it's, it's, especially for women, because um, we, we are graceful, even mm -hmm. when we're in our strength. And, um, and I think it can apply to men too, as long as they don't feel like they've lost that strength that they have. And, and the right. grace that comes in for men would be to have that compassion or to have that um, heart-centered space versus the head and the ego and the macho, you know? And when they don't have that balance of that grace, um, it can cause a lot of challenges. And so, um, perhaps with your art hanging in someone's house, uh, if the man's always walking by it or seeing it, it might help to influence bringing more of that grace, right? And that beauty into, into their life. Um, so, so you have a uh, new collection called Urban Queens. And I, I've noticed that it's getting a lot of positive feedback where you're posting it on, the, on your social media. Um, so what inspired you to paint that one? So that, that, uh, that's my newest collection. And it was inspired by an article in Forbes magazine. It started in March uh, 2020 during the first lockdown. I gave up my studio because it was too far to travel. And we had a very strict lockdown. I had to, you had to kind of have a 
paper to get out of the house, basically. Mm. Wow. I had to there was police checks all over. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to paint. I'll just, you know, do all the housework that I don't enjoy doing and, you know, rearrange my closet and do all these other <laughs> things. I, they never get done in my house. And I won't paint for a little while for, for, for the, um, during the pandemic. And then uh, during the lockdown. And then I read this article in Forbes magazine that talked about, it was called, what do countries... Uh, with the best coronavirus response have in common women leaders. And they looked at seven head of states that were women and how they dealt with the coronavirus response. So this is very, very early on. Remember, it was just the, the Western world had just gone into lockdown. I don't think you guys in the, in the States did. It was more in Europe was happening. And um, they were, these articles were looking at how is women leadership different than men leadership? You know, what are men going to do about this pandemic? I mean, this was the time when Boris Johnson in the UK was saying, oh, we need herd immunity. Don't worry about it. Go to work and it's all fine. <laughs> and Donald Trump had a similar view. And then you had countries like New Zealand or Germany where they had women leaders and they went into lockdown very early. And they were, you know, doing televised programs, talking to children to explain to them what the pandemic was going to be. And so they really looked at the different styles of leadership. And I thought, of course, this is what we need right now. We need a mother's nurturing for the people. We need a mother's point of view. How would a mother deal in this situation with her children, she would look at the bed, at the welfare of the children first, right? She wouldn't think, mm -hmm. oh, uh, I have to go to work uh, because I have to earn money. She would say, no, my children are my priority and I'll sort out whatever else needs to be sorted out. <laughs> so that made me, again, because I'm, I've been painting women and, and looking at this woman uh, role, it made me think of the leadership roles that we have in society, not necessarily as head of states, but even in our households or in our communities or, you know, amongst our friends, or we might be running a st yoga studio, or we might be running whatever we're running, or whatever leadership roles we have, how important are they in society? Because we bring our own qualities and our own um, abilities into it. And so I started playing with this idea and I used the crown, obviously, because that's you know the ultimate uh, uh, leadership role that we can think of. But I'm playing with these ideas. I'm playing with these things. Also, if you think about it, the crown actually means serving others you know being a queen when we think about a good queen we don't think about a queen who conquered with a sword the land we think about a queen who is more like a queen of hearts who is doing her best for her people who is serving her people and then you know I'm playing with the sunglasses because it's you know you feel good you feel like you feel powerful you put your sunglasses on you put your lipstick on this is also having fun I mean you know life is fun let's have some fun but the idea was yes who are we in society these are the questions that I was asking myself and how do we contribute to this society and how much does this society needs us right now because we were in a place where you know now children were at home and they needed to be homeschooled and women had to work from home. So all this pressure, I think there was more pressure put on women uh, during the lockdown than ever before. So um, uh, these were the questions that I was asking and this was what I was painting. Then I was posting them on social media. And like you said, the response was absolutely amazing. I didn't expect so many people to connect with it uh, on, on such a deep level. Well, I think that's it. You know, you, you hit on what women were going through uh, before the pandemic, but even more so during. Yeah. And, um, you know, when, when we became confined, it caused people to really have to pivot 
and reassess and we look at their life. And so I think your, your urban Queens um, spoke to people, you know, to, to tell them to be bold, to be beautiful, to be empowered, to be, uh, you know, the, the true self and authentic self that, that we are. Um, to, to dig deep and to realize that, you know, they are stronger than they thought they are. I mean, women have to do that quite a lot. And, and I think some of these paintings helped some women to, um, to do that. To recognize that and, and to, to uh, like I said earlier, to honor that, you know, we, we can feel strong, but not feel strong in putting that strength out. Yes. And so it's, it's, Art in any medium, in any medium can be a tool that we can use to to build on that confidence you mentioned earlier, and that strength. And and you do say that it's important for us to connect to that source of strength. Um, and your art is a chosen avenue to contribute to that, and that you believe art um, is the potential. I think you you confirmed that it awakens something in us. You stood in front of a painting for two hours. Something <laughs> was something was was triggered in you and awakened and you're like, oh gosh, okay, this, this painting, I, I have to absorb whatever it is that it's bringing to me. And um, I, I think it can open us to new ways of thinking and, and you believe that as well. It, it brings us to another level of awareness of ourselves and the world. And, um, you know, for, for centuries, we've interpreted art and, you know, the Mona Lisa and Michelangelo's painting. I mean, you know, there's something about us as humans that maybe perhaps we're seeking and the art helps us to find and connect whatever it is we're seeking. I think sometimes we shouldn't even try to understand it so much. We should just, you know, sit in front of it and let, let, let us touch it and let us feel it. I mean, we do that with a piece of music. We don't try and understand, you know, a Beethoven piece. We just let it overwhelm us and take over. And I think it's the same with art. Um, I obviously I love art, so I collect art as well. So I have this piece that I bought in a gallery in London and it brings me so much joy. I have it in my bedroom and first thing I do when I, and I've had it for six years now <laughs> and I'm happy every day. <laughs> you know, that's and great. It's, it's just, it, it's a tree. Basically it's a tree in a field, but you know, the colors and the gestures and, when the sun hits in the morning or when the sun hits in the evening, when I go to bed, it's different. The colors change. It brings me, it just makes me so happy. And I think one day I just realized if I can do that for somebody else with one of my paintings, then I'm living my purpose. Then this is my purpose. And I think that's when it shifted from painting for myself to painting for other people and to painting consciously about the message that I'm sending and the, and the energy that I'm putting in my paintings and to actually be able to contribute and to actually be able to leave a legacy behind. Um, but yeah, it was because of that piece of art that... <laughs> Brings me happiness every day. <laughs> well, that's that's wonderful. And, and I can tell you have a passion and that passion is the catalyst for you to create and, and you're not boxed in and you have to create a certain piece of art. You kind of let that art come to you and through you. And then I'm sure you have another series that'll be coming up from uh, after the, uh, the urban. And I know that before the urban series, you have an animal series, which I love because I love animal totem. And I, I love how we can um, uh, take an animal and understand you know, how it's a part of life and a part of our life. So you say we're connected with animals of the world through an invisible soul cord. So how does that apply to your art? So that series happened um, after a shamanic meditation. 
I, I did a shamanic, it was actually a shamanic healing and I saw this lioness and the, the, the shaman that I was working with, she told me, oh, you just saw your spirit animal. Uh, you know, she's a lioness. Why don't you connect with her and invite her to be with you and, you know, try and communicate with her? And I thought, <laughs> okay, probably the easiest way for me to do is to paint her. <laughs> <laughs> so I started painting the lioness and the more I was painting the lioness the more I wanted to understand and to learn about uh, you know the meaning of spirit animals so then I fell in love with the whole process and then I started looking at how people were depicting animals throughout history because you know um, I was looking at I, I, obviously I went and I did more shamanic meditations and being so highly visual <laughs> I saw amazing paintings in my head that I just wanted to put on canvas. Uh, but then, you know, in shamanism, you had, for example, the snake, which brings wisdom, and it's the connection with Mother Earth, uh, Mother Earth, and rebirth. And then in the West, the snake is more uh, it symbolizes uh, deceit, you know, because we have it in the Bible or uh, Medusa in the, uh, uh, the, not the Romans, the Greeks. So it had a negative connotation. So then I wanted to find out how the animals are depicted in, throughout the history in various cultures, what their meaning is and how cultures are, you know, were connected with, connecting with their animals. And I created a whole series with animals, but then again, I had to go back to the woman and how the woman was um, uh, feeling. So these animals then became more of a symbol of certain emotions or mm. powers or totems, if you like. So I have a lot of women with the big cats, which are strength and courage and uh, and uh, obviously power and many times they're just looking at them it's almost like looking in your own reflection it's almost like saying I'm as strong as a lioness but then what does the lioness do she looks after the cubs she looks after the whole um, um, she looks after everybody and then she goes hunting and she does everything so again I kind of I went back to the woman because you know <laughs> That's my main, that's my main subject. And, 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 and I use the animals in conjunction uh, with who we are. And, and yeah, I love that series. <laughs> yeah, which I, I love that. And, and I love how, you know, the women aspect came into that over time. And as you started to explore that more. So um, you talk about being claircognizant. And that means that you get messages as a knowing. And I think you, yeah. you have explained pretty well throughout this interview um, that part of you that just takes that information. It's almost like you, you are just living moment by moment and you're not trying to paint, but the painting presents itself to you and you bring it to life. Well, that is a great moment. It doesn't happen every day. You know, that's, I think, what every artist is striving for, that place when it comes through you. But many times you sit in front of the canvas and you wrestle with a canvas and it doesn't come or, or you come full of energy and you say, that's it, I've got so much inspiration today, I'm going to do something, and then you mess it all up. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it, it's a process that, because it's a creative process, you have no idea how it's going to turn out at the end of the day. I mean, I was working on that painting yesterday. And at one point, I felt like giving up painting altogether. Oh, no. Well, I'm glad <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> Why am I an I don't think I should be an artist. I'm rubbish at this. I can't do this. Nothing is working. So I called a friend of mine who's an awesome, awesome artist. He's an amazing artist. And I said, it's just not working out. And I don't think I should be a painter. I think I should go and get a job. And he laughed at me. He said, 
I do this every single day. Is this just your first time? <laughs> <laughs> well, then pat yourself on the back if, if it's your first time. You're doing good. Go. Don't ever yeah. give up on your art. A- absolutely not. You know, when and, and maybe it's that perfectionist that's in us when uh, you know we 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 are our worst critic and uh, we we look at it at whatever our skill or gift is. And, um, you know, we want it to, to be impactful. We want it, we want people to connect with it. And so, um, you know, I think as an artist to myself, it's looking at whatever I'm producing within the art and knowing that in that moment at that time, it's the best that I can do. And if I have to walk away to come back, to, to reassess and, and move it forward, then, you know, I'm okay to take a step back. Yes. So, um, so calling your friend was your way of, of stepping back. And I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm glad he, uh, he reaffirmed that you're a great artist and don't give up <laughs> and don't stop. Yes, I, I guess, you know, it's just, we're going through these, uh, through these um, uh, emotions or stages. Uh, however, you know, finding that sweet spot when it just comes through you, oh, that is the best. You know, I have my music on and I dance and I have really huge windows here so people can see me from the outside. And sometimes I would step back two hours later and think, wow, did I just do this? And I didn't even realize. So these are gorgeous moments. Uh, Unfortunately, they're not everyday moments, but uh, the more the merrier. (laughs) Right, right. I totally get that. Um, So I've I've so enjoyed this conversation. You're so inspirational and and I I can't wait to... um, get this interview out there and and let people listen to your inspiring story. So to close out, I always ask, um, what are some words of wisdom that you would like to share for people who maybe haven't fully stepped into their passion or they want to feel more empowered as a woman and and feel like they they have a voice in whatever they know their strength is or to to gain that strength and confidence? What would you like to say to them? I think, you know, the the best gift that you give yourself is to work on yourself. Uh, You know, whether that means reading a book or listening to a podcast or being inspired by somebody else who does something which you think is extraordinary, Uh, but probably pull away from from you know the everyday negativity and and whatever is going on with tv with news with people moaning at work with all that and take a step back and work on yourself because that's the most that's the best gift that you can give yourself work on your heart on your mind on your there's so much more you you discover that you have a, a you have a life, basically. You, you just, you know, I took this, this journey in 2001. It was my first uh, seminar. But then, you know, I was reading books before that. Before that. So, so, yes, just look at people who are inspiring you, who's inspirational, and, and know that if they can do it, you can too. Just work on yourself. I love that. That's awesome. (laughs) So where can people find you? How can they find you on social media? Oh, everywhere. I'm on (laughs) Instagram, Ramona Pintea Art. I'm on Facebook, Ramona Pintea Artist. I'm on on my own website, (laughs) RamonaPintea.com. So uh, I have a few things on YouTube as well. I'm trying to post some videos. So yeah, just Google me and I'm sure you'll find me. Yes, and we will be putting you on the Roku channel as well, the uh, Nod TV under the creative artist section. So be sure to check her out because she's awesome, amazing. Her art is phenomenal. And uh, thank you for allowing me to have you on my show. It's been amazing. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun talking to you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.